All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. We are doing another podcast episode. This time around, it is just me and Alex Larkin's not available today. So um, it's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll see how Hello, the world. conversation goes. Um, but yeah, I don't think we've done one just with two people before. No, um, the closest we had when it was just the two of us, but then we had Justin. Right, right, right. So there was no locker on that one either. But there hasn't been one where it's just two people. Yeah, we'll see how uh, how the dead air goes on this one. <laughs> yeah, if it becomes a uh, inter- like strange, I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I also didn't prepare for this one, so <laughs> we're, we're really we're really uh, going. We're for flying it. on flying off the seat of our pants here. Yeah. We're just uh, going all <laughs> all in gung ho. We'll yeah. figure it out. Um, but I guess to start with, it's been what, like three weeks? Yeah, it's been like three weeks. I didn't do one the past like two weeks or so. So, yeah. so uh, what have you been up to since then? Uh, what have I been up to? I've been, you know, chilling for the most part. Um, still trying to look, you know, to keep the viewers interested on the everlasting saga of will Alex finally be able to get a job or not? Mm-hmm. Saga. Uh, no. <laughs> the answer is no. Uh-huh. <laughs> but. You know, I'm trying. At this point, uh, I'm just going to might have to get like a job at like the mall or something for now. Like this is taking too, way longer than I would have thought. I would like something because with all the trips I have planned over the summer, I need this thing called money. Right. So I mean, uh, either so that figure... or either that or you could probably apply to a job outside of game dev for now. No, I have um, been doing that too. I've been applying to just like just, just, at this point, I've just been applying to like just junior dev positions, and I still haven't. I oh, mean, okay. I've been in contact with like a couple, a couple of recruiters who reached out to me, and I applied to the positions, but I haven't heard back from a uh, like the actual like I guess the HR, I guess whoever is in charge of the resumes. Recruiting and I reached stuff. out to the recruiters, like I haven't heard from these people. What's going on? They're like, oh, you just have to wait till like they start reviewing the next batch. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so at least like they didn't forget. At least they didn't forget about me. You know, but uh, right. So, but like in the meantime, while that's going on, I I need to start like getting some money for all these all these trips I have. So I'm probably just gonna have to bite the bullet and like go to the mall, work at the mall or something for a little bit. That but, makes sense. But it's fine. Whatever. The, just having that, just watching the bank account go up instead of down is gonna be a, a euphoric experience. Mm-hmm. So of course, of course, I'm fine with that. Um, um, yeah, that makes sense. I would probably also recommend uh or just as a note like a lot of people finish uh, a lot of that stuff around may because that's when a lot of people graduate so typically they Mm. make a lot of decisions around that time i remember last year when i was applying to some stuff there was a position where i didn't hear back from them and that was why um and i had to make a decision since they wouldn't have had one before my decision for my current job um was due so mm-hmm. that that's also another thing like uh, a lot so of so you're saying like 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 they like at this like they just start slowing down because they're getting more applications now is what you're saying or well it's cuz they have to make a decision by around May right because mm-hmm. uh, students are graduating a lot of people are graduating in May right yeah, um, yeah and for that reason so long as they make a decision by then they'll have an idea of who's going to start working at some point in the summer. Um, mm. And that's like a, probably a similar thing for some internships and stuff like that too. But um, so that is something to keep in mind. It's like, um, I don't know how it works for the the fall. Right. Um, mm. But at least now, like most people graduate now and that's why um, at least from my experience, like they'll have a delay there um, as to okay. um, when they're actually going to see yeah, I, mean, well, I have like the recruiters information so so i don't hear anything i could always just reach right. back out that's not a problem that's true but uh, what else have i done um i played uh in terms of my gaming mm-hmm. uh, i played uh pikmin 3 again i love pikmin one of my favorite series of all time but you don't know anything about that so we don't need we don't he's get a, into that he's a smash character yeah he is one of the characters in smash yes um Alamar. Is, is Alamar? yeah yeah okay okay yeah, um, Alamar. I forget you, what he does. He does he have like I don't remember any of his moves except for like these um tiny little like bat things that circle around or whatever. I don't know what they're called. Um but like they're like I, different colors or something. I, I'm not Yeah, sure. they're, they're the Pikmin. Oh, are those Pikmin? Those are those are Pikmin. Okay, yes. Cool. And then he has all the different colors and everything. Are Pikmin's like rubber ducks and shit. Like I don't know what they're what they're supposed uh, to no, be. No, they're they're like little plant based. They're like little plant animals. They're like half plant, plant half animals. animals. Okay. Yeah, they're plant animals. You would if you played the game, you would understand. But uh huh. <laughs> you know, I I was playing it again because Pikmin Four is finally coming out in a couple months. And I was like, you know, I'm in a Pikmin mood. Mm-hmm. So I played Pikmin Three again. But uh, 
That's nice. what I was doing over the past couple of weeks. And then in terms of other stuff, um, I finally watched this week. I finally watched all the John Wick movies. Ooh, I watched one, okay. two, and three. I watched those this week. Uh, I haven't seen four yet. I'm going with my dad on Tuesday. But I did catch up so I could f- watch four. Um, so that's what I did. I watched one, two, and three over the past week. I don't and know that, if you've seen the John Wick at all, the John Wick movies I, at all. I but. have. I've watched the first one. I don't. I think I watched the second one as well, but I don't really remember that one. Mm, well, that, one that one was my least favorite of the three. So okay. Makes, I, when I talked to my dad about it too, he kind of, he said he kind of forgot the plot of that one too. Uh huh. But I guess it just seems to be like the most, like the most forgettable one. For uh, mm. for the second or for the first one. I just always re re see scenes or like scenes pop up where it's like, ah uh, yes, this it's not it's not about who uh, what you did, son. It's about who you did it to and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Where it's like mm. the, the stupid. Uh, uh, have you watched Game of Thrones? No. Oh, okay. The the nope. kid is uh, Theon Greyjoy, <laughs> and he's just uh, like okay. I hate him. I don't from know. That. He was also in Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, I hate him from that show too because he's just. A... He just seems like he always plays hateable characters. Yeah. Though. Yeah, well, he but betrays. He's got, but he's good at. Yeah, he betrays the the Starks, um, even though he mm-hmm. was raised by them. Um, but he was like technically a prisoner of war in that show. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, but I just don't. <laughs> I just don't like him um, because uh, so because of that as well. So I was like, yeah, you get told off. Good, good for you, son. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yep. uh, yeah, so that that's just the scene that I always see, and then always uh, the dad being like, we call him the Baba Yaga. Yep. But that's Baba not Yaga. quite right because he's not the boogeyman. He's, he's the he's guy who's going to, to kill, kill the, the boogeyman. boogeyman. And it's like, all right, cool, <laughs> cool, bro. Um, um, yeah, that's a that's a great line right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I would definitely recommend them. I mean, all three movies are fantastic. It's just like you know, when I say like my favorite to my least favorite, you're talking like decimal points of percentages here right you know like it's not like one of them is like you know like oh this one's like a four out of ten it's trash they're all like at least like you know eight and a half to like nine out of ten mm-hmm. but uh like they're all great movies but uh the second one i just think was probably my least favorite and the, th- the third one i was a fan of up until like literally last two minutes of the movie i was not a fan of the ending gotcha. but we'll see, we will see when the fourth one comes maybe the fourth one will fix the ending of the third one uh-huh. i mean everybody's saying the sword the fourth one's amazing so I guess I'll see when I go on Tuesday. One when he's hunted by everyone. Like yes. All these, okay. Yeah. So then I did watch two. He kills the person that gave him the original job or whatever for that movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, yeah. And two is uh, he kills. Also I, spoilers. I like, Sorry. Yes. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers for the John Wick movies. Yeah. Uh, well, if you haven't uh, John seen Wick them, but was a long time ago. If the fourth one's coming out now, so like you know. Yeah, it was like. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, what else can I talk about here? Either that or I might just do a cut. Um. Let's see. In the past couple of weeks, I yeah, I have no idea what to talk about that I wouldn't just repeat in a few seconds. But let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna pause. Here. This is gonna be the first time we have. Uh, I, and my mom, my mom had uh, walked in, so. Ah, uh, thank you, because I had no idea what I was gonna say while you were gone. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what can I say that I wouldn't simply repeat to Alex when when he came back? I was like, what else? What else? Um, yeah. <laughs> what yeah, no, were sorry we about that. My my mom had walked in. I don't know what else we talk about. We were saying spoilers for the John Wick. Ah, yes, yes. Set. You're saying it was a while, but yeah, no, the second one is, uh, I forget what is like, uh, Santino gives him the marker. It's like the Italian guys give him the marker. He's uh-huh. like, to, I want you to go kill my sister so I could take her seat at the high table. Right. And then he goes and kills the sister. And then the, the, the his, uh, the guy who gave him the marker backstabs him basically like he wants to tie up loose ends. So he wants to kill John Wick who killed it because he killed his sister. Yeah. Uh, and then he, you know, and then John at the end, John Wick kills him, but he kills him in the Continental, which is and why that's he's the, gonna be hunted. Yeah, and that's the rules of the Continentals: no business shall be conducted on Continental grounds. Mm-hmm. So then, uh, so then he gets excommunicado, and then yeah, three is getting he's getting hunted by all the other guys. Right. And then, uh, yep. And then the fourth one is out now, and I haven't seen it yet. So. <laughs> 
feel like a lot of stuff happen. came out this like recently because <laughs> uh shazam yeah. fury of gods also came out yeah i didn't see that i, I don't know either. if you saw it yeah well either. it doesn't seem like it didn't seem like anybody saw it i saw it made less money than morbius did in its opening weekend so yeah so I don't think anybody saw it because like, just like the DC is in a weird spot right now where it's like we know James Gunn is going to be rebooting it, rebooting it any day now, but they're still mm-hmm. coming out with movies. So it's like, do I really do I really care to go see these movies when they're just going to get its universe is about to get rebooted anyway? Right. In like a year or two. So like, I don't know. That's how was the thought my dad and I had it was like, I don't know if it's even worth seeing it in theaters, knowing it's just going to be rebooted anyway. Yeah, you know, but... I agree. But also. I was kind of just like, well, do I want to watch another superhero movie right now? And I just didn't. <laughs> I just yeah, that's didn't. Fair. Like, the superhero burnout is definitely like, at an all-time high. I think. I think everybody's getting sick of them at this point. Yeah, I'm. Even the just... people who are, even like the big fans, are getting sick of it. Like I'm getting kind of sick of it too. Especially like I, how we keep saying, you know, I phase four. No, I did not think it was that good, and it kind of really started burning me out of it. Uh, yeah, like you know. I, I liked Ant Man. Which was apparently a rare opinion, <laughs> um, but really? people not like it. I liked it. Yeah, I, I heard. I, really? I just kept seeing thumbnails of being like, "Ant Man is terrible" or whatever. I don't know. I'm surprised um, people thought that. Yeah, I know. but I was like, we've seen much worse in the last couple of years. I don't yeah. know what yeah. you're there, talking. There was about. a lot more stuff that came out be- besides Ant Man. Yeah, but for whatever reason, I'm just like, I thought that would revitalize my interest in marvel movies and stuff like that and when the people that i was with asked me if it actually did when i walked out of that movie i was like yeah it did but now i'm just like i don't actually know if it did anymore because i'm i'm just like yeah. i don't really care <laughs> I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't care the, anymore this multiverse, the multiverse stock has really just been like a complete mess i feel like i don't like under, like it feels like there's no cohesive no, no cohesive storyline going on it feels like they got like five different storylines going on at the same time and it's like, yeah. I feel like nothing's really combining into make, making some type of cohesive plot. Well, I think uh, that partially it was just lazy, <laughs> laziness going on. And mm-hmm. I don't know if, I, I don't want to say that it's like, like, I don't actually know behind the closed doors. Like, is it just Kevin Feige's fault for whatever's going on? Or mm-hmm. is it like, now that he's taking a step back, I think, and being more of a top level person i guess as opposed mm-hmm. to just working on making sure everything's like has a through mm-hmm. line and all of that like i don't think he's as involved anymore um on yeah. the day to day but at the same time it's like disney plus emerged and then there was this whole push to essentially turn like long movies <laughs> into tv shows that mm-hmm. didn't quite translate well and then also mm-hmm. just i think they just spread themselves too thin i think they yeah. definitely Phase four was definitely a symptom of quantity over quality. Yeah. There was just so much stuff and most of it was not good. Yeah. And um I think they seem to it seems like now that you know, like uh by Bob Iger's back now, it seems like they're of course correcting that a little bit. Like I saw like you didn't see saying they want the MCU to be focused more on the quality than just putting out content for the sake of it. And and I saw that like a bunch of this MCU stuff has been like delayed and I think they said there's only like three more things coming out this year. A lot of it got pushed good. back. To work on it so i'm like thank god <laughs> yeah because phase phase four had like more content than like the previous three phases combined in like two years and most of it was so bad like it were like just completely pointless it was like, right just, and- i'm fine with there only being like three more things coming out this year i don't need to be sitting at in front of my tv every wednesday watching a marvel thing literally like last year it was literally, like almost every wednesday there was like a marvel thing that i had to watch and it was like this is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and in some and, uh, weeks, there was more than two, one thing, more than one day a week, because you would watch the show on Wednesday and then go see the movie on Friday. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my God, yeah. there's so much stuff to keep up with for no reason. It's interesting that you said that you had to watch it. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the feeling. It's like you had yeah. to watch it just in case it might potentially be important. Just in case it might be important. Yeah. But also, I mean, like as much as I say that too, I do, just like I always say too, I do enjoy watching it because I watch it with my dad. So it gives mm-hmm. me something nice to do with my dad every week. We could watch and discuss the show. But at the same time, I'm like, most of this is so bad. Like right. if, if I was not watching it with my dad, I would have dropped it a long time ago. Uh, like it's just, 
Like it was not enjoyable to me for most of it. Most of those Disney Plus shows, I just did not think. Outside of like Loki and Moon Knight, I don't think many any of them were really any good. <laughs> yeah, I really liked Wandavision as well, but oh yeah, I forgot about that one too. I did like Wandavision. Yeah, yeah. Those beyond three. beyond those three, I'm like I didn't really need to watch any of these, and I don't really care. Falcon uh, and Winter Soldier, absolutely pointless. Yeah, uh, the thing with Falcon and Winter Soldier is that it's a fil- it's a show that if you take it out nothing happened like nothing mm-hmm. really happened like you're gonna have a captain america 4 i think i think that's in the works or whatever yeah no yeah they did yeah they did say that right and what we're gonna see is captain america or falcon as captain america or beca- now being captain america or whatever so if you just mm-hmm. watched endgame and then switched over to captain america 4 nothing happened man no. <laughs> you, you didn't need that you- you just be like, how did he get the shield? It's be like, well, I mean, you could watch the waste of like six hours of your life watching a show, but like, didn't but like, really do much got, besides showing. Yeah, showing he got him, the shield got, six like, hours he ago. Muse- <laughs> he went to the museum. You could just watch the first episode where he went to the museum, and then like, Warwick told him take the shield, and he's like, okay, and then you don't have to watch the other five episodes. No, or or you could just be like, well, in my head, he just got handed the shield in Endgame. I don't care. Why, why would I oh, watch six oh, hours yeah. of content you're right. I for him to honestly, get handed the shield I, again? I, I, right, you're right. I completely forgot that happened. You're 100% <laughs> correct. Okay, there was even less of a point for the show to exist. I forgot yeah. that he actually just gave him the shield at the end. Right. So what is the point of that show even existing? It did. Okay, now I see. Yeah, no, that show did absolutely nothing. And, and it's, not, <laughs> it's not to say that the show was like... I, I don't think the show was terrible. Like, I just think that... It was not the, as bad as some of the other shows. Yes. It was just kind of pointless. Yeah, I just think that... They had some elements there where I'm like, oh, these are some cool story elements. Like, I really liked the older super soldier whose name I'm blanking on. Was it, wasn't it like Isaiah Bradley or something? Yes, Isaiah Bradley. That's who it was. Something like that, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. His character was very, very cool. I think that was the most interesting part of that mm-hmm. entire show. And yeah. honestly, I kind of and- just wish we got a mini series about Isaiah Bradley's past as opposed mm-hmm. to a Captain America, uh, like a, a Falcon and Winter Soldier show, because yeah. that's an interesting piece of but history. Now, but if they didn't do the Falcon and Winter Soldier show, they wouldn't have introduced the Young Avenger number 543 for the Young Avengers thing. That's totally not happening. Who, who, who are you talking about? Isaiah Bradley's uh, son. Or grandson, whoever that was. Why would he be a super? He's not a super soldier. He's just. A he's kid. a young. He, in the comics, he becomes a young Avenger. Bro, no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Nobody watched. See, the thing is, like, I, me personally, I really enjoyed Miss Marvel as well, and I, I liked that because there was a mm-hmm. lot of cultural elements and stuff like that that come in for the first couple episodes. But that show yeah. goes completely off the rails after no, that. It does. And on top of that, it was terribly marketed. And on top of that, it's like. Nobody cared, generally speaking, and it's like, yeah. like the first like three, four episodes of that show were pretty good, yeah. and then they completely threw it out the window in the last two. Yeah, and it was just completely fell apart in just the last two episodes, and then that show sucked. Like it completely ep- fell apart in the ending. Episode one, visually, I think was very, very good. Like I, you had. That's- the, and like, oh, that's what the thing that annoys you too is that like in the trailers and then that first episode it had like that Scott Pilgrim vibe to it, mm-hmm. you know, where it was like very dynamic and stuff. And then after the first episode, it just completely disappeared and became like every other Marvel yeah. show on Disney Plus. Yeah, and I was, was like, strange. why did that happen? What was the point of promoting it like that and making the first episode like that? And then it just did not do that again for the rest of the season and became the same generic Marvel stuff that I've seen a right. bajillion times. You just you know, you like, don't really see more of Kamala's head after that first episode. No. It's like you, episode one is like you're in Kamala's head majority of the time. Yeah, episode one was then, the best episode. Yes. And then episode two, it's like, oh, you're, you're just in the MCU now. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like what? Why, why would you I, create such an awesome start? Episode five for being like half the length of every other episode and then just killing off like the main villain in like two seconds for no reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she was like, I'm evil. And she then Kamala was like, no, what about your son? Oh, yeah, right. I have a son. And then sacrifice yourself and died. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> there was no build up to that at all. And especially since the episode was like half the length of all the others, it made even less sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels like they must have cut something or something that actually led to, you know, that making sense. But right. then they and, didn't. And also, like, the whole damaged control thing. Like, I don't know, man. You, you just made, like, <laughs> a white lady racist for the sake of having a racist white lady in your show or mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, why? It, it was like it was like Obadiah Stane all over again. It's like we, we've we've had characters with more depth 
in the last 10 years like you well, don't, they don't have to go they, they back. don't have time to give a, a character like that depth when they're in like you know a, like a show for like 30 minutes then put in an extra two episodes or something so that it's no, because actually they, all the marvel shows got to be six episodes for some reason well not daredevil born again apparently that's oh, that gonna one be, not six i think episodes? that's gonna be a full season i've heard what like how many episodes 22 like, or something like that what? yeah i didn't know this yeah, I, right. I heard some news about that a few weeks ago. Uh, when does that even come out? I still got to catch up. I watched like the first three episodes of the Netflix show like a year ago. And then I never, and then I was like, oh, this is bad. Good. I got to keep watching it. And then I never picked it up again. watched three episodes? Yes. What is wrong with you? You've been, watching, you've been watching all these Disney Plus like crappy created That's shows. Like mass produced nonsense. And you no, haven't no, watched I Daredevil? I agree. I agree 100 percent i agree with you dude you need to watch daredevil and jessica jones you have because to. Well, like, i was watching them on netflix and then they took them off netflix and i was like oh now they're on disney plus now but i was like that's a lot of work and you have disney plus what do you mean that's a lot of work it's the same it's amount of work lot, you know let me explain it's a lot of work because where the tread where we have i usually I, I watch a lot of my tv like on the treadmill right but where we have the treadmill and downstairs the wi-fi in that room is terrible so I was just watching it on the because on FiOS, Netflix is just a channel on the on the cable box on on FiOS. You can't so I was just using Netflix apps. on the. Well, no, it's not not like on a smart TV. I'm saying like on the actual cable box itself, it was a channel, so I didn't have to use the Wi-Fi. It was just through the cable box. Oh. Just it's like bring, channel six hundred something or whatever. Just but then bring your when laptop went on Disney downstairs Plus, and I, use I, HDMI. No, I, the problem is the Wi-Fi sucks in that room. That's oh. why I was using. That's why I was using it on the TV. Is because the Wi-Fi doesn't work because that room used to be uh, the garage, but then we converted the garage into, you know, another room. So like the walls are really thick; they're like solid concrete because you know it was to insulate from the outside normally because it was a garage, but now it's just a regular room. So the Wi-Fi is really bad in that room. So that's why I was just using the channel on the TV to watch it on Netflix. But then they took it off Netflix. I was like, I could try and bring like my laptop down there or like a tablet or something, but like this Wi-Fi is so bad, this is not going to work. Uh -huh. And then I just haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I completely fell off of it. Um, no, but I do need to watch it. I do need to watch it before Born Again comes out because it was actually really good. The first three episodes, I was like, wow, this is really good. And then they took it off Netflix and I haven't gone back. But it will happen. It will happen before Born Again comes out. I will do it like... Like how I watched all the John Wick movies like a day before John Wick 4 came out. I will catch up on Daredevil like a day before Born Again comes out because I'm a procrastinator and I need the pressure of not being able to finish to get me to finish. So here's the thing. With the with that universe, right? You don't go to watch Iron Fist. That's garbage. No one cares about that character. He was actually terribly acted. I heard, that sh I heard that show was terrible. I I don't really know why i never completed luke cage i watched like a couple episodes but i just wasn't interested for whatever reason i, I don't really <clears throat> know what happened there i liked the premise i think i just honestly it would have been more interesting to me to have that show have like jessica jones and some other characters at the start of it but that's just my personal opinion watch show, luke cage. Um, yeah but but on the other hand i have heard only good things like um i think that that show's gotten a lot of awards and stuff like that so i've heard good things about all the netflix shows except for iron fist yeah jessica jones punisher everybody said was fantastic i, didn't watch I, that I one, also but... didn't like punisher as much as daredevil but i did like mm -hmm. the show um i just i don't know I, maybe it was like a bit too gratuitous with the violence sometimes and maybe that mm -hmm. was i'm not exactly sure um i think the first season was really good and the second season i wasn't 100 percent behind it um so uh -huh. maybe that's what i'm thinking of more of but that's just my personal opinion yeah i, I, I will catch up before born again comes out yeah that's but, gonna happen but if i <laughs> was to give advice i would say to watch daredevil 100 percent jessica jones and punisher i think those are the three that for me, at least, I've fa yeah, loved I think the most. They, didn't they say, too, that Punisher was going to show up in Born Again? I thought I remember yes, reading that like a, so month, like a month or two ago, right? I heard yeah. that, and I also heard rumors that I think that Jessica Jones might also return. Okay, so I'll have to watch those then. Yeah. Okay. Jessica Jones is such a fantastically written show as well. It's just so good. Mm. Uh, I would say I heard that the villain in that one is really good. Like, what his name is? Like, Kilgrave or... Yeah. Uh, Purple Man is the first season villain. So good. Uh -huh. So, so good. Um, yeah okay i'll have to watch and honestly it is a it is a terrifying first season 
just because of what the Purple Man's abilities are and what he did to Jessica and all of that. So uh, right, I'm watch, not going to give away any spoilers on that because I, I really want you to watch that show. I will. Um, yeah, I'm like, when when I need... Uh, so so the, for me, that season of Dare, uh, of uh, Jessica Jones, it's like very scary and everything. And so like something like Daredevil, um, where it's like a, a bit more of a traditional superhero like oh this is just the villain I'm, i have to fight them and stuff like that mm-hmm. it's a bit easier for me to watch that show than jessica jones just because of the psychological traumatic elements of that show uh-huh. it's like hard to watch um at times but but they do a very good job of like showing jessica's mental state and like how she is the way she is and all of that so i, I would highly recommend that show as well right, i'll do it yeah when i when i watch them i'll come back to you on that but yeah i have to um, that but back to oh. the Disney Plus stuff, it's like it's just bad. Yeah. It doesn't need to exist, really. Like ninety yeah. percent of it, I didn't watch the Christmas special. I didn't watch Werewolf by Night. I was like, I don't care. Those anymore. were fine. Yeah, they were see, fine. But like, is there anything that's like, oh, I would, I, I highly recommend you watching this. <laughs> Moon Knight. <laughs> well, I guess I wouldn't say highly recommend. Maybe I just I recommend. I mean, Moon Knight and Loki, I thought were probably the two best ones. Those are probably the only two I, I would say that people should watch. I feel like right. those are the only two I think I'd say were, were worth the were worth the watch. She Hulk definitely was not. Oh, I didn't watch <laughs> that either. That one was terrible. That yeah. might be my least favorite thing Marvel's ever put out was She Hulk. I did not like Eternals? that at all. Worse than what? Worse than Eternals. Well, I mean, I didn't hate Eternals as much as you did. Ah, okay, okay. I think I put that at the bottom, like the worst film out of yeah. Marvel ever. I don't, I don't hate it that much. I didn't hate it that much, but uh-huh. yeah. No, I, but She Hulk is definitely my least favorite thing to come out of the MCU by far. It's like not even close. Yeah, I feel like the pitch meetings for these shows is: Do you have like a semi decent premise? And then the question is: Do you have? Do you have an idea of how you're going to finish this, resolve this, or whatever? And mm. the answer is just no. <laughs> Well, I think it didn't for She-Hulk too. Didn't the people say that like literally a show about a lawyer? None of them knew how to write any like interesting law, like any interesting courtroom scenes or something. I thought I remember seeing that, reading that. I don't know. I didn't follow any She-Hulk news. I like, it was obviously you know she's a lawyer, so there's a lot of stuff in a courtroom. And I think I remember the writer saying like, "We have no idea how to write a courtroom scene." And I'm like, "Why are you writing the show? <laughs> Why didn't they get someone from like Suits or?" even from daredevil or someone who's written those types of scenes before to get, no idea at least for like advisory advisorship or whatever yeah. i don't know what the word is but like to advise on those scenes to make them seem better i don't know i i just know the meme for at the very end when hulk brings a uh, sakar or scar yeah 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 sakar's the planet scar is the the sun yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and then just his hairline <laughs> Mm-hmm. And being like, why does he look like that? I don't understand. Like, it just makes me question how much time the show took place over that. Because like, it goes off in the first episode. And it comes back and it has like a, a full-grown son already. Like, when did that happen? Where did he? When did yeah. he like do that? Have time to do any of that? Like, where did he? Where, when did he birth a child? It happened five years ago. <laughs> when Anything's he was possible. on. When he was on Sakar. <laughs> I don't know. I don't it's know. I, I think that's kind of dumb as a concept because I think they already ruined the capability of doing those types of stories with what they did at Sakaar in Thor Ragnarok. Like they made mm. a choice all those years ago to do Planet Hulk in the way that they did. I don't really think it makes sense for how they're going to go back and like retread those waters. I... I don't know what they're trying to do there. It it sounds like, or it seems like. I don't know what they're trying to do with any of it. There's like 5 million different plot lines going on. I don't know what they're trying to do with any of it. I don't know how this all ties into Kang. And I don't even know what's going on with Kang. Because I don't know if you, did you see like that news with Jonathan Majors, like from last night that he got arrested for like domestic abuse or whatever. What? (laughs) Yeah. Like last night, Jonathan Majors got like arrested in New York city for like domestic abuse or something. So I did not hear that. That Uh, Well, well, there you go. Breaking news coming from me. No, (laughs) not at all. It's like who even knows what the fuck they're gonna do now? Like I don't know. Everything's in, everything's a disaster at Marvel. Hey man, the Flash movie is still coming out this year. Do I care? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I do I care? Like I never watched. Oh, is it George Clooney that's coming? No, it's not George. Clooney. No, it's uh, uh Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yes. Uh, Michael Keaton, yes, because he's Vulture as well. Yeah. Um. 
he's coming back or whatever. I'm like, I didn't watch any of his movies. Yeah, it's from like the 80s. It was before my time. Yeah. Like, I want to be hyped those. about it, but honestly, do I really care? No. No. And do, I care? do I care, especially considering that the universe is going to get rebooted in like a year or two anyway? I think no. that movie is rebooting it or whatever. I'm not sure. Is that the movie that's supposed to reboot it? Yeah, that's the movie that's I don't supposed know. to reboot it. The DCEU is such a disaster. We talk about Marvel not having any plot line. What is the plot line? What is the plot line of the DCEU been literally this entire time? Well, we got the first slate a few months, uh, like a month well, ago. Well, no, I mean, like, from, so. I mean from like the beginning till now. I know, like, James Gunn released, like, his slate. I'm talking from, like, from, the, from like, I mean, there is Man of Steel till now. There's no three line the there. Yeah, no, there is not. <laughs> we we know this. Like, uh, I at least more. I mean, I guess several through lines is better than no through line at all. Well, honestly, but, though, like, fifteen through lines is kind of the same as having no through lines, in my opinion. That's you know, what, you know that's true. Like, but, apparently, a giant celestial shoving its hand outside of the planet yeah, doesn't have any it. impact on that the has universe. not been referenced besides like a random like easter egg in she hulk that's yeah that has not really been referenced at all like that there's a giant guy sticking strange. out of planet like no gravitational an anomalies now that there's this giant massive hand sticking nope. out nothing nope. wrong with the earth's core which is supposedly where this celestial was living nope. or not so yeah, yeah, it is a celestial. Uh, has been living all this time, and there's no. No, uh, all you get is a random footnote at the on like the sidebar of a one second look at She Hulk's laptop. Yeah, that's all you get. Also, no gravitational anomalies from the moon for when this giant celestial is just on top of the planet. No, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. No. That's not how gravity works. If anything, if anything, I guarantee you it will not be brought up until if, if there's even ever an Eternals suit. That's when it'll be brought Dude, up. It's, because it's that's never up. going to be brought up because it doesn't make sense for the planet. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. It would have made more sense if it was brought up already. The fact that they waited this long, it just keeps making less and less sense. Yeah. Like, like, like even to just explain it away and be like, oh, the Avengers dealt with it somehow or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, or like even just use that in, as an introduction for like Reed Richards to be like, oh, he's studying the alterations to the planet with in relation to how this hand stuck out. Well, see, Albert, uh, Albert, you actually have a brain. You actually have a brain that people working on the MCU do not. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, I, like it doesn't have to be Reed Richards. It could be Doom because like, why don't we have Dr. Doom yet, man? Why did we not? Uh, because because we're doing Kang instead. Well, I don't, dude. I don't even care about Doctor Doom being a villain right away. I'm just like, I want to see his origin. I want to see. I, I want to see Doom too, but because like, I don't know. dude, I, I don't know what they're doing. His story of like his mom making a deal with Mephisto or whatever, and then basically Mephisto having her soul after she died, and Doom going and fighting Mephisto. I mean, we've, we we have whatever country like, that he whatever country that he's like a. Latveria, is, is, is canon. We've had we've been there before in the MCU, right? Right? Wasn't that in Falcon and in the Winter Soldier? And didn't they go there when they were like in Eastern Europe or whatever? Wasn't that where they oh, were? No, no, they went to uh, what's it called? Because I thought I remember. It, that's not Latveria. That's another place. Oh, not... Latveria has a ruler and laws. Uh, the place that we were at has literally no laws. I I'm blanking on what it's called. No, 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 not that place. There was another place. That I, I know what place you're talking about, not that one. That one was like Madripoor. Yeah, yeah, Madripoor. No, um, I think, no, I think there was another scene when they were in Doctor Doom's country. They went I to Latveria? I don't... I thought I remember, or at least some type of Eastern European country. I thought I, my, I thought I remember my dad mentioning to me, like, oh, that's Doctor Doom's country. And I was like, oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, I remember uh, seeing that in passing. Yeah, I don't recall specifically. All right, I'm looking this up now. I, I don't think so, because I feel like I would have remembered if they brought up Latveria. I'm looking it up right now. Now I'm curious. Latveria in MCU? I don't see anything here. Okay, Maybe, maybe I right imagined away. it. I don't know if it's ever brought up. Let's go to the fandom page. I might have completely made that up. I thought I remember reading that, though. Yeah, I mean, it might be. I just don't recall. I don't know. I'm going to say that we still haven't seen it just because I feel like mm -hmm. 
I would have remembered that, but I could also be wrong. Regardless, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, the the fact that we haven't seen Doom at all is strange to me because, like, I I don't even think they have plans for him, and I don't I don't really no, I care don't. to see him for the first time in Fantastic Four and for him to be the villain. Like, I I've seen that already. <laughs> I saw that yeah, as a child. We've seen that already. Apparently, they also did that in Fan Four Stick. I never watched that movie, but you know, that that too. And I'm like, well, do I need to see that entire origin story again? Probably not. I I really want to see more of Doom being not only a genius but also a magician, which we have never seen. Mm-hmm. And because because Doom is supposed to be someone maybe not completely on par, but around the power level of Dr. Strange as a magician, but he's also a genius, right? Yeah. And so, I, I don't know. I just feel like we should... Okay. You know, I definitely made up that Vlad Varia was in Falcon Winter Soldier. I made that okay. up anyway. I was, okay. You know, cool. I, made, I made that up. I completely gaslit myself <laughs> into wanting Dr. Doom, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, so th- that's just bothering me that we haven't seen Doom. I care much more to see Doom than to see Kang and also I feel like you needed a character as a big villain that people want to see mm-hmm. like on a pop culture level and people know who Doctor Doom is more much more yeah. than people who know who I mean Kang did, is. before the MC, before the MCU though did people know who Thanos was No I mean, you got to remember that, like, a lot of the things you think of in pop culture is only because of the MCU like before the MCU did anyone give a single shit about Iron Man Right, you're you're right. <laughs> you're you're totally right. You know, like so, like the, the Kang might just become the next Thanos, where like Thanos is you know completely embezzled in pop culture. You can't go over two seconds without somebody you know making it saying a Thanos quote or something like. Right. You know, like Kang, that, Kang could true. potentially reach that level. I don't think it's going to happen because the MCU sucks right now. I don't yeah, think that's going to happen. But if they were going to do that, why not do a ten year build up again? Instead of because why, why, do a ten, why do a 10 year build up releasing like three things a year when you could do a five year build up and release 10 million things a year and but no make one's mo- going make to want faster. to watch it it's too much well there'll, there'll be enough people that they'll make money that's all they care about yeah but you gotta realize everything's just about making money they don't care Bro, i i sincerely doubt that they're making that much money on disney plus anymore because like you have to make like five different shows each year on like for each fandom or whatever and it's like how much are you spending on that, man? Like, that's just dumb. Well, that's why we got so much Marvel stuff. They wanted to make sure you stay subscribed. That's why they released, like, a new Marvel show, like, every month. Right, but, like, half of them are garbage and no one wants to watch them anymore. People pay like, for I, it. People, I, there's enough people willing to pay for it. That's all they care about. I don't know. I, I feel like it's backfired. I feel like it's backfired. I think so many people... Or a lot of people now are. No, people, just like, people I can are definitely over it now. Yeah. People, a lot more and more people are getting over it. I, the superhero burnout is just getting worse and worse. Yeah. I think Shazam is just the next uh, showing of that. <laughs> yeah. With, like the thing with, is, uh, I really wanted to want to watch Shazam. I really wanted to want to watch this movie because but I have really no interest. Liked, yeah, I, I really like Zachary Levi, but I'm like, I wish this the movie superhero was, burnout. I wish that movie came out like four years ago. Hmm. I don't know exactly when the first Shazam was, but I feel like I was gonna say wasn't that about four years ago? I, I'm not sure. Uh, let me double check when when this was, cause Shazam. Maybe even more than that. If it was like 20, what could have been like 2017. 2019. That would have been like what? 2019. Okay, so yeah, so four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> I, I don't know like sooner than it currently is because i'm like no i get what you're saying though like before like when you were still like had interest yeah because <laughs> it it's was like too long to get to a sequel right you have one movie and then you don't use that character for all these years it's like where is the interest in that in that interim i don't mm-hmm. see it no one's going around being like i want to see the next shazam movie like no, no one was talking about that the only thing that in the dceu that might have me interested is, is a peacemaker i need to watch that because everybody yeah. said that was a really good oh, show peacemaker was fantastic you yeah i need to watch that. that i need to watch that yeah I, I need to watch that have you seen the suicide squad i did watch the suicide squad but i didn't watch peacemaker okay yeah so. it's just a fun time because james gunn right, wrote watch. both of them i do like james, james gunn does make good stuff i do like all the yeah. stuff that i've watched of his that he makes yeah so, so i do have to watch a that choice of what yeah all right i gotta watch that too um that's like the only dcu thing i have any interest in though yeah at the moment like i don't care about shazam i don't care about the flash i don't care about aquaman 2 um 
what else is even coming out? I don't know. Other stuff, probably, that I don't care about. Yeah, I just honestly think that it's like what you're saying. This is superhero fatigue. Yeah, most a lot of people are getting superhero fatigue at this point. I think I think that uh, the boom has, I think the bubble has burst at yeah. this point. I think people are over it. Like even more and more people, everybody's like, the MCU should have just ended with Endgame. And it yeah. probably should have. I probably should have. But I mean, it, it was I, never I, going I, to. It was never going I, to. It was never going to. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten No Way Home, but like, I don't really care. I, I could have done it just at the storyline, just ending at Endgame, and then you know them just being like, okay, we made our money and move on. But yeah. like, that's not how that's not how stuff works, unfortunately. Like, we made our we made money, but now we can make more money. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's why I always get so annoyed when everything's like always everything's got to be like a trilogy or become some type of franchise nowadays. I just wish there's something somebody could just release a movie and it just be a movie. You know, like yeah. I feel like everything becomes like a trilogy or a franchise or like I watched the John Wick movies and they were good and I looked it up and it's like, oh, you got John Wick four coming out and next year there's gonna be a spin off movie and a TV show. I'm like, who cares? Yeah. Why can't I just watch a trilogy of movies and be happy about it? Why is everything gotta devolve into like the cinematic universe stuff? It's so annoying nowadays. It makes yeah. everything so un- unenjoyable to me. It's very strange because I'm like, you're essentially just churning out less and less quality con- content or whatever yeah. um and it's like it's in order to i guess placate the masses and to be like yeah mm-hmm. just sit down sit, sit on your butt and watch yeah they just nonsense. want you to con- just want you to consume the content yeah like i'm so over it i just want like a, like a movie or a tv show to just be that without it turning into something like some type of cinematic universe yeah like it drives me insane everything's got to have 10 million different avenues yeah, something I'm really hoping is, I watched this movie called Bullet Train. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's on Netflix. I have heard of it. I didn't watch it though. I like really Pitt, loved right? that movie. What was that? Is Brad Pitt with Brad Pitt? Uh, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, okay. I, I think, think yeah, yeah. He, yep. he yes, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I don't. I don't have a lot of actor <laughs> names memorized outside of the MCU, uh, mm-hmm. because that's mostly been what I've been watching for so many years. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but I do believe that is Brad Pitt, the guy from Fight Club. <laughs> yes, the guy yes. from Fight Club. Yes, <laughs> I've seen other movies with him. I think he's also he's also in World War Z. He's also Achilles in. Is that movie called Achilles? I forget. I don't know that one. Though. I don't know. I, don't know that I, I loved that movie growing up. I thought that was very fun. I'm pretty sure that's also Brad Pitt. I just remember he was I, I've in seen World other War things Z. with him. It's just, yeah. it's just sometimes when it's like older actors and I'm like, I, they're not in the MCU. I'm like, do I still remember who they are? Because uh-huh. uh, that's typically the only time I'll remember an actor is if I've seen them year after year for a long period of time. Because usually mm-hmm. I don't give, a, I don't care about who an actor is. I just want to see if they put out an interesting, interesting piece of uh, of media. Regardless, mm. that was a very good movie. I think Pietro is also in that, the from the MCU Pietro. Pietro. Um, there are a few other actors that I recognize, but I don't remember any of their other names. Uh, mm-hmm. But that was a very, very good standalone movie. If they make a sequel or like a spinoff on Netflix, I'm going That's to be. I'm un- it's going to be unfortunate. I don't want it. I don't uh, want uh, every it. T- every time that happens, it almost like sours the experience for me. It's like I can't yeah. just watch something. But like that was an enjoyable hour and a half. It's like no, now I got to invest like 10 million hours of my life. Yeah. If I want to understand what's going to happen in Bullet Train Two, I got to you know do every all this other shit. And I'm like, right. I don't care. Why can't I just watch a movie and then it just be over in like an hour and a half, two hours? And I'm like, I had a good time. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I so, don't, it's just, everything's like so greedy nowadays. Yeah, it's just that's like, the big struggle. Because like on a company level, it's like, how do we get people to come back a million times? Oh, this movie did kind of well. Let's do another one. And it's like, why, yeah. why are you why are you doing this to me? Like I get it from like a business sense. Like I, I like. Obviously, you know, like John, each John Wick movie, back going back to that, is like keeps just making more and more movie, yeah. more and more and more money. Like my dad had texted me right before we got on here that like he sent me an article about John Wick Four crushes franchise record with seventy three point five million opening weekend. And it's like okay, yeah, obviously, you know, it's gonna keep making money if you just keep making sequels. But at the same time, I just sit here like i just well, then like i say that but then it's like they'll release a movie like bullet train and then i haven't seen it but i will go see john wick 4 so it's like I'm, I'm also part of the problem that i'm complaining about to be fair but like like i'm not going to see like bu- i didn't go see bullet train but i'm going to see john wick 4 so i don't know i mean as much as i would like it at the same time i'm not really doing anything to solve the problem anyway so yeah i guess i don't have any stake in that conversation and that's one of the reasons why i'm struggling as to whether or not to 
go back to large other larger franchises like something like Star Wars or like I don't know if mm-hmm. I want to see the fourth Indian or the fifth Indiana Jones movie. I'm really not sure. <laughs> And then, mm. like, even going back to Doctor Who or something like that, I'm like, how, when does this end? <laughs> when does it end, yeah. my guy? Like, is it just mm-hmm. forever? And at that point, like, why don't I just live? <laughs> why don't I just do things instead? Yeah, rather than just sit there and consume, just go out and do things. Yeah. Mm. It's a it's a strange world we're living in right now. Mm-hmm. Where it's just kind of like an unending media storm. Or content late, stage, storm. late stage capitalism, man. Yeah how it is but i'm more just like i want to do other things it's like becoming more and more apparent and like i'll fluctuate between like oh i just want to watch a show to oh i want to actually do something instead and like it'll wax and wane every now and again but i always come back to like i can't just sit back and consume all the Uh time it's it's Mm -hmm. not fun it's not enjoyable Mm -hmm. no so and it's becoming no, more and more that. apparent as time goes on where I'm like, I the things that I used to enjoy consuming, it's just, it's not as fun anymore. You moved on from it, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was no, fun. I, that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about that for like 45 minutes. Uh, cool, cool. Um, well, the, what well, what did I... My, that was my uh, conversation topic uh, exhausted. So yeah. it's your turn, Albert. Come up with a conversation <laughs> topic. So uh, there's no dead air. Okay. Well, well I, I, guess I, I guess I should return to question because that all stemmed off of what did I do these past three weeks? So right. let's go with what, you, what have you done the past three weeks? Okay, and maybe yeah, we'll yeah. get a conversation out of that. Yeah, sure. So the reason why we hadn't been meeting was because my mom was visiting, right? And yep. uh, for that reason, I was like, well, I would rather spend the Saturdays that I have with her and stuff like that. Obviously. So that, that was a good time. Um, well, some of the things that came out of that, I spent a day walking around Olympia, another day walking around Seattle. The Seattle trip was actually more of a highlight because that was actually doing some touristy things. We went to the Space Needle, which I hadn't gone to That's yet. Cool. That's cool. Um, that was very fun. I was scared to step on the... So there, there are two layers or two floors at the top of the Space Needle. Mm-hmm. The first one is just like... Like there are giant glass panes and you can look out and take pictures and all that. That's yep. fun. And then on the floor is it below like a that, glass floor. Yeah, the floor below that <laughs> has the glass floor. And uh that's also I think that's the the only one that's rotating. Um and so it's well, like it a rotate. Rota- yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I could be misremembering. I, I think I didn't both, know it rotated. Both floors rotate. No, no, both floors rotate. Um, but the bottom one is a glass floor as well. So I could not stand on that glass floor. I, oh, I no. was like, I, I, I am you. not gonna have fun just staring <laughs> down all of these stories and being terrified. So I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> my mom did briefly, but I was just like, I think we were both just like, I, I don't want to stand yeah. so, <laughs> and look down like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Yeah, cause, it, but it was very, very beautiful to look How around. How far is thing. Seattle from you? Seattle is. It was just over an hour to oh, drive that up bad, there. Uh, SeaTac's just under an hour, which is the Seattle airport. Mm-hmm. Um, so Seattle's like just south. Uh, or SeaTac, SeaTac is just south of Seattle. Uh-huh. Um, so I had done like that uh, journey before, but yeah, it was a little bit longer too, cause I was going um, to. A different spot in the city to where i'd previously gone but that was very very cool um to yeah. just spend like maybe 30 40 minutes up there walking around the yeah. other thing that we did was what i think is also very very cool was going to i think it's called the chithali uh glass museum i, I hope i pronounced that correctly uh but that was very fun uh as well we just saw these giant glass pieces hanging around like giant sculptures and things like that so i took a bunch of pictures um got to see a little bit of someone actually working on a piece as well because they had some demonstrations well like like glass blowing and stuff yeah yeah so i think they were making like a a vase of some kind or something like that but the stuff in the museum was a lot more cool where you just had like these giant glass sculptures with like some things were like different animals and things like that it was very very fun to see um we got to see like a glass glasswork ceiling i forget exactly what part of the world that like stained glass like uh no, no no it was like glass pieces right okay and then you have that sitting over a clear glass roof so like a bunch of glass pieces are above your head 
and okay. it looked really really cool um yeah so there's stuff like that it was very fun to see all of that stuff i had been to a glass museum back in january in tacoma as well so it was cool to see a little bit more of that um with like very very large sculpture types of pieces they also had like stuff outside in like their garden areas where like there were glass pieces mixed in with um just regular nature and stuff like that so that was mm-hmm. also very cool got to take a lot sounds of cool like, pictures cool. yeah um but beyond that uh, i think something that was very very cool was i went to two different parks that are nearby to me and I don't know why I hadn't gone there because both of them were like a less than 10 minute drive from where I live. One I went to yesterday and one I went to a week ago or two weeks ago. And uh, one is called Tumwater Falls. And then the other one was called Watershed Park. Both Mm -hmm. of them were very cool. uh, Tumwater Falls is literally built alongside a, a mini waterfall type of thing. And you can like walk along the river and stuff like that. Very, very cool to see. Very pretty. Um, oh, that does sound nice. And uh, it just kind of reminded me of some of the beauty in nature that I don't really notice if I'm in my apartment for too long, you know? So oh. I, I'm honestly very grateful that my mom visited because it got me thinking about different things that I could do and stuff like that. And I think the watershed park is also considered a, a rainforest or something like that. I think I read that when I was walking in and just looking at what was listed there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so that was also very, very fun. Um, Yeah, so so both of those things. I mean, yesterday I was walking around for like maybe 30, 40 minutes because they had like a big loop at Watershed Park that I was walking through. I think I went a little bit faster than I wanted to just because I thought it was going to rain and I didn't want to be stuck uh-huh. like halfway through this loop while it was raining. So Yeah, no, that's um, completely fair. Yeah, so I'll definitely go back to that one because that was a bit more like a traditional uh, a traditional trail where you're just surrounded by like giant trees and nature and all of that as opposed to the other one being a bit more you know you got a paved road and like very clearly yeah. built out sections it was like a trail like up a mountain that trail at the what at watershed or it was just uh, like a so you flat, go like, you go a bit down um so so you start at the top of the trailhead you go down um into the actual loop area and then the loop mm. itself is like a bit lower um so okay. like the top of the trail is like where you could see a lot like very far out Cause you're like very high up on like a cliff's edge type of thing. Um, uh-huh. And then you actually go down and, and do the loop. Um, it wasn't very, it wasn't very big. It was like a one and a half mile loop, but it was a very yeah, fun way to, to spend time. Um, much easier to do than like to drive a few hours to go on like an actual long hike. So I'd probably go there. I'll, I'll probably go there semi consistently now. Definitely, good, ex- definitely good exercise to just go over there, walk around a loop once and then come home. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I very much enjoyed that. Because it was just a, a nice end off for the day. It was a bit more time in nature. And actually, I spent most of yesterday outside as well. Because nice. uh, yesterday morning, I was cleaning up Lois Lake with people from my workplace. So we have... I remember you mentioning that you were doing community service. Yeah. yeah, we have a section of the park that we take care of for the full year. For like a year's worth of time. And so mm. we're doing another day where we're just cleaning up, um, pulling out ivy that's not supposed to be there a couple other non-indigenous plants and then also picking up like any trash and things that have been left behind so very very cool experience i'm glad that these are things that were also built around like my job so that i had the opportunity to do that because i don't know if i would have just done that myself i guess you know i know i feel like nobody just as like i'm gonna go out and do community service i feel like i feel like there's always got to be like some you always got to get some push to do it where it's like oh i gotta go do this community service so uh you know i could pass for school i have to do this like for me in high school you know i had to do like a certain number of community service hours every year because it was a catholic high school but like you know so i feel like there's always got to be some push behind it which is you know kind of unfortunate from a societal standpoint Mm -hmm. that's like you can't just go do something good for people it's like i gotta do it because i guess i'm out of it but right you know that At least it's getting done, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, with community service, I feel like unless you're in the mindset to always be looking for those types of opportunities, it's more just like, well, now I have to do it for whatever reason, or it's Mm -hmm. the opportunities, like, fall into my lap. Um, Like, for example, like, the the thing that we're doing uh, with the park, it's like, 
it's not mandatory. Like we don't have to do it or anything like that, but the opportunity arose and it's like very clearly like, this is the day that we're doing it. So it's like, well, I might as well. Right. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's something that's interesting. It's like, um, maybe if you're more built in with like certain community, um, related groups or whatever, maybe those types of opportunities fall in your lap a bit more often. Mm -hmm. Um, meanwhile, me, I, like I spend a lot of time on my own. Um, and like a lot of the things that we do, especially like in our generation are online and stuff like that. So, um, a lot of our community related building and, and stuff like that is through the internet. So it's, especially if you're like further away from people, it's like harder to see those opportunities where it's like, Oh, this is just around this community. And so community related opportunities appear through that. And so it's just yeah, a bit yeah. more natural to see those types of things. Um, whereas if you're spending a lot of time on your own or online, it's like a lot more, it's, it's something you have to actively look for a lot more, um, which can be daunting. And yeah. like, I, I haven't done any like yep. research on my own for like other things I could do. I'm sure that there is like, um, but it's also like, you, you have to balance it, right? You, you have to see mm -hmm. how much time you are willing to spend and, and stuff like that. Um, I could probably do a bit more than I'm currently doing, but it, it really just depends. Uh, I am glad with the, the little that I've gotten the opportunity to do since I've been here. So, uh, yeah, you really see you made a positive impact right, on right. something. Um, you know, it is, it is also very satisfying to pull out a giant thing of Ivy, like a giant, oh, yeah. uh, a vine of Ivy from, Oh the yeah, ground. I know. I, cause we come, like every spring, my mom and I clean out the backyard. So uh -huh. we do that every year just like, cause in between like the fences in between the houses, you know, you just get all this shit going and you go, yep. and you pull it out and you're like, Oh, that's, that's so satisfying. Yeah, because like, it just comes so the vine, they just come so easily. Those like vines and those ivy, like you would think you have to struggle, but you just grab it and you yank and it just keeps going. Yeah, <laughs> you're like nice. Yeah, it's a fun time. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely a satisfying job. Yeah, I uh, oh, I also bought a plant and almost killed it. <laughs> well. I bought well, a, a time. Don't, don't let don't let Justin know. Yeah, I bought it. You'd be very upset with you. Um, and I thought I was taking care of it fine. And then I looked at it a few days ago and like half of it looks like it's dying. <laughs> and I'm just like, what happened? I thought I was watering well, it. Were you, were you not watering it enough or I something? I was, I thought I was like, I don't know. It's a small plant. So I'm like, you know, I water it. Is it like, by like a window? Is it getting sunlight? It's like by my sliding door, but I don't know if it's just angled wrong. Cause it's like right next to it or something. So I put it on my dining table now so that it's like directly right by my sliding table, uh, sliding door now. So mm. we'll see if that helps and rejuvenates it. Also, oh, like, so uh, I stuck a, uh, a plastic like knife thing in it so that there's like a rod to keep it from like just falling over or uh -huh. whatever, um, to see if like more of the, uh, th uh, the time like strands or like pieces, um, get, more distributed sunlight or whatever mm -hmm. so we'll see if that helps i'm honestly not sure um i'm trying to water it might have to contact justin you know he, yeah. he's the plant guy yeah i also found out yesterday that there are apps where you could just take a picture of your plant and it'll tell you like what's wrong with it and how mm -hmm. to fix it or whatever so i'll probably an app try for everything these days yeah so app for everything that that is definitely something that i would like to uh work on Cause I was like, well, I don't feel like spending the money, time, resources that it would take to take care of a cat right now, even though I really want a cat. So Whoa. why don't I try my hat hand at actually taking care of a plant instead? And it's not going <laughs> well, great. Well, that's not voting well for the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure man i don't know what's going on um i'm trying to yep. figure it out <laughs> hopefully there's an app where you can take a picture of your cat and figure out what's wrong with it you might need that oh yeah yeah totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, my cat has just not been laying in this spot for like three days and it's starting to smell what's wrong with it yeah you know like it's you a, take a picture oh this cat is this cat is dead I mean, oh okay oh no good to know how do i fix that please <laughs> how do i fix it <laughs> uh you have to bust out the necronomicon uh-huh and uh enchant the magic spell and your, your cat will come back right of course of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that is a thing i don't know i feel yep. like there, there are a few more things before i'd feel comfortable having a pet 
now that I'm like thinking about it a bit more. I'm you're, like, you're, I, you're allowed to have a pet in your apartment? Yeah. I would just oh. have to... I know some apartments don't allow uh, pets. Yeah, I would just have to pay an extra fee, I think, mm -hmm. um, for like when it's first moved in. But, you know, I, I'm not doing that right now. I was thinking about it. Like, honestly, when I moved here, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a cat like immediately. And then I was like, wow, I have a lot of bills and like things to pay for mm -hmm. with the salary get, that i have you're gonna have fun and then real life hate you and you're like oh yeah. well. dude it's strange it's like oh i finally have like a real job and then with that since i moved out it's like oh you also have real bills actually yeah, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it's yeah, like I, I, you like like a concept like yes i'm making more money this is awesome and then you realize wait i'm not really making more money at all because like it's, most of it's going to bills yeah it's yeah, very uh, strange uh, uh, um uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i don't know it's like it's like if i was living at home i feel like it would be kind of perfect because it'd be like um a quarter of my paycheck would still be in my bank account i guess yeah. um because i i have i a, mean when you say live here like live over here you're saying like live with your parents yeah live with my parents right? like, at least for yeah, a little I was gonna, while i was gonna say because i don't think if you were living like well i guess you have a father upstate so it wouldn't matter as much but like by me in the city no that you wouldn't it would probably not would not only be a quarter of your paycheck probably well i think Larkin's a lot higher here larkin has like four yeah. roommates right and they're like renting yeah. out half a house or whatever um i think they individually pay like half of my rent right now but they have roommates so that makes sense yeah well he has roommates here um, yeah, that makes sense and like they have a decent amount of space and all of that like i i, I think that they're they have a good spot um mm. but also but you I have also to have roommates rare, though i mean not yeah i also yeah, think there are places to yourself, find it's a little bit yeah um Sorry, I talked over. We talked over each no, other. No, no, then. no, no. It's fine. No, it's um, fine. I was just saying the problem. I mean, this is, much, this is nice to pay you cheaper. At some point, you do also do like to have your own space. I feel like and not have to share it with yeah. roommates. I'm sure like that's nice for you. You come home and the whole you have the whole place to yourself. I know definitely my last semester of school when I didn't have a roommate. I definitely enjoyed just having the whole place to myself. Mm -hmm. There's something nice about that. Yeah, it does depend. I mean. I feel like it's good to have your own place when you know a lot of people and you're like, you've been in a place for a while, right? I've, I've noticed that being someone who's newer to the area, it's been kind of a struggle on that mm -hmm. front because it's like by virtue, like for example, in college, like by virtue of simply being in the same space, like things will happen. Like you'll hang out with people, you'll talk to people. Right? Yes. If you're living by yourself, like you can go a long period of time without talking to anyone. And that's mm -hmm. just how. Yeah, it I is. guess that's different because even when I was living by myself on campus, you know, Murray was still at, on campus. Yeah. You were still on campus. Right. Um, you know, Shannon well, was like well, five minutes. Five, Shannon was like five minutes away. So really, it's like I was living by myself, but I still basically had the mm -hmm. camaraderie of talking to people all the time. Right. So I guess it is different from your scenario, where it's like you move here and you really don't know anybody, and yeah. you're living by yourself. It's, probably uh, way harder to get those type of interactions i also think that the college environment the college vibe is very much more intuitive for meeting people because mm -hmm. there are just so no, many opportunities yeah, no, to do that yep. it's a much i feel like it's a much more active process after graduation where it's like how do you meet how do you meet people how do you make friends like i don't know how this works yep. anymore uh yeah i would agree with that yeah and it's like i still haven't met anyone outside of work because i I don't know. It's just I haven't well, been time to download time to download like Tinder or something. I don't know. Tinder friends. Uh, yes. Tinder for <laughs> Tinder for friends. Where is the Tinder for friends? Isn't doesn't Bimble have bum Bimble? Bumble have a feature <laughs> like that? I don't know. I don't I never downloaded Bumble. Um does Bumble have a feature for just for friends? I think it has a professional setting too, where it's like you're trying really? to find professional friends or whatever. Professional That's interesting. Coworkers or something like that. I don't know exactly how that works. That's very bizarre, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how actively those other features are used, but I think they exist. Um, uh, but we gotta post like a Craigslist thing. Looking for Looking friends. Looking for friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll, just like, we'll pay handsomely. <laughs> we'll pay handsomely for friend. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's strange. I, I, that's kind of why I've been very happy to have like things like this podcast, as well as like um, just other 
things where we do like during the week every now and again where i could join a call and stuff like that like that yeah. that's been helpful um i also talk to my family a lot as well so mm-hmm. yeah, that stuff's definitely been uh been helpful along the way although i do kind of wish i i've made i would have made some friends outside of work but again that that takes some effort that i just that's definitely done. some effort you have to like actively like go out and like go to like like a bar or something and just like talk to people right um like, I don't know. There are things where I'm like, yeah, I could probably do certain things to to meet people. Like one thing that's been at the top of my mind for a long time is to join one of the makerspaces here. Yeah, I was gonna just mention. I was gonna say I'm gonna be mentioning the makerspace. Yeah, it just it hasn't happened yet. Um, and the reason being is like a lot of the active hours are like the entire weekend, and I don't really know if I wanted to dedicate my exactly entire weekend on that. When? Oh, on the weekend. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to double check on the hours to see if there are like days that I could spend during the week doing that stuff. We'll we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> well, I don't know. What else is there to talk about today? Um, um, I could read else? you the fact on my OMG facts calendar for today. Oh, of course. We got a. We got. Well, we have to preface. What is an OMG facts calendar for those? Who uh, don't it's know. just. Uh, it's just like a little desk calendar. I mean, I guess if you're not looking at video, you can't see it, but I'm covering the facts because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, yes. It's just a, you know, a desk calendar. And it says, OMG, facts. Mm-hmm. Then I just get a fact every day. I flip over the calendar, except on the weekends because the weekends are combined into one thing. But my the fact is for, just one day. <laughs> yep. My Star Wars, I, last year I had a Star Wars fact calendar. It was the same way that the weekends were just one fact. So I guess I just had to do the desk calendars. Mm-hmm. But this is my fact for Saturday through Sunday, March 25, 26. In 2003, there were 86 days of below freezing weather in Hell, Michigan. Th- thanks, there you go. Thanks for that. So hell, hell, hell froze over 86 days in 2003. Uh huh. So, you know, people say, oh, you know, that, that'll happen when hell freezes over. Turns oh, out Hell's has... Michigan. That's the name. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Hell, okay. Michigan. In Hell, Michigan. Uh, interesting. I was so hell has frozen over. Let me check in the garbage. Maybe I have a fact from the uh, other days too before I, I threw out the garbage. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, right, yeah, here's a fact from Friday, March 24th. The popsicle was invented by an 11 year old who kept it secret for 18 years. Did he just pick up a flat stick? That's what I'm wondering. I guess it's, he's like he invented it. What he invented? Like I'm gonna put like apple juice like in the freezer, and then yeah. I'm just gonna lick it. And he kept somehow kept that secret for 18 years, and somehow nobody thought of that before him. Wait, but... wait, no, no. What he probably did was he was like, oh man, it would be cool if I didn't have to just uh, scoop out this frozen popsicle or this frozen uh, apple juice with a spoon. How about I shove a stick in it? Maybe. And he said he kept that. See, I don't know how you keep something like that secret though. It's just a simple concept. It's just frozen fruit juice on a stick. Yeah, I, I'm like not did sure. he just like did he just sneak eat it when nobody was looking? Like did he never have like friends over and was like, look at what I made. I made us a dessert. He was have, busy you know? hiding the secret of the popsicle. He didn't have to like. Have I just friends. picture him, like how did his parents never open the freezer? They never see what he was putting in there. Like did they not question well, what he well, was it doing? It could be. It could be that he was he created the popsicle for a reason other than. Like he was 11 years drinks. old. I don't know. He was 11 years old when he invented it, supposedly. So maybe he was using it. I don't. I think he kept. He just made it because he wanted a frozen, a frozen snack. And then maybe. I don't know how he kept the secret. I don't know. But that's funny. All right. Well, this is the last one I have in the garbage. This is the fact from Thursday, March 23rd. Mm-hmm. The cables of the Golden Gate Bridge contain 80,000 miles of steel wire. That's a lot of steel wire. It is. 80,000 miles. It's quite a bit of steel wire. Uh huh. Um, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> oh, oh. I did want to, uh, to ask you because this is something that was, uh, that I've been thinking about a little bit as like this week has progressed. Yes. Um, what, uh, what are some things that you are most looking forward to, I guess? in the future that you're like, Oh, in five years time or like 10 years time, like I really want these things to have happened. Mm, In five or 10 years time, I really want these things to happen. Um, well, I mean, hopefully it won't take that long, but a career position would be nice. Okay. Uh, (laughs) hopefully it won't take that long, but you know, I'm not trying to work in like the mall for the next five years of my life, but Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, what else? Um, and I'll probably, hopefully, within the next five to ten years, I would like to have my own place. I want right. to like to be living with my parents within five to ten years. You know, in five years, I already like push it thirty. I'd be twenty. You know, don't, but basically at this point, almost twenty nine because my mm -hmm. birthday's in May. So I'd be like, oh, at, if eight, five years from now, I'd be almost twenty nine. Right. It's so like at that point, I would like to at least be in my own place for like a couple of years. Um, I'm not sure where though. I mean, I would like to stay like in the city area, but. Oh no, you froze. What happened? Albert, your oh. camera froze. Oh, okay. Okay, we both You're froze back. for each other. There you are. Oh, we both froze for each other? <laughs> yeah, go okay. ahead. You froze for my end. I was like, uh, <laughs> did, you, did, you at least, did you at least hear what I said? Uh, you wanted to be in your own place at least for a, a little while at that point, and then you were saying something else. And I was saying, yeah, I was saying, like, I don't know where, where. I mean, I would like to stay, like, in the city area, but the city's also expensive. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I don't know. I would probably have to consider that, but that's that's something I would like. In terms of uh, more exciting things in life, mm -hmm. um, I do want to go take a trip to uh, like California, like where my aunt is, like LA, at some point, and go to Disneyland and Universal Studios Hollywood at mm -hmm. some point in the next couple of years once I have money to be able to make that trip. Right. I like to do that because I want to go visit Super Nintendo World, which just opened at Universal Studios. I want to ride the Mario Kart ride. Mm -hmm. Very important. And then at Disneyland, I want to do Galaxy's Edge. I want to build my own lightsaber. I want to drink the blue milk. I want to fly the Millennium Falcon. So I would like to do that at some point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Once I have money, but that involves getting a job. Uh -huh. So, you know, like we got just following the sequence of events here. So at some point in the next couple of years, I would like to do that. Mm -hmm. Um uh i don't know maybe in the next couple of years i would like to develop my own game i do have ideas for that but i actually need to start working on that I do have ideas for a game um in turn i also have like ideas for like youtube stuff as well i have like written started writing like scripts for youtube videos and then i just never went back to them so i would like to continue working on that uh -huh. um Besides that, though, I have no lofty goals outside of that. Just, you know, live life and see where it takes me, I guess, as of right now. Gotcha. Um, any uh, any ex other experiences that you're trying to have? Like, for example, like places you want to visit or like even outside of the country and stuff like that? Anything like that you're, that you're like, oh, if I... I would, like, I would like to travel out of the country more. I've not really been out of the country like at all. Have you never in been to, life. I don't know, like Italy or anything? Like, do you have family nope, I'm, there? I'm going to Italy. I'm going to Italy now. This summer, we're going on a trip. I don't have any nice. family there. Nice. Oh, we've got what's a good doing like a guided tour in Italy this summer. It's one of the trips I have. Um, you know, I, the only time I've ever really been, the only time I've been out of country before was like when I was a kid and we went to like the Bahamas. Okay. You know, I was like like single digits old. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I've ever been out of America. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. I would like to definitely like to travel more. I always thought, you know, like traveling to visit, see a little more of the world would always be exciting. Mm -hmm. I always was like, I want to visit like more countries. I want to see like how other places live besides just New York City. <laughs> right. You know, like, so I always found that interesting. I would like to do that at some point once I have money, do some more trips like this trip to Italy, take, go to see other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Italy is yeah, one that's... of the spots that I want to go back to because. I, I did like oh, you've a, been there before? Yeah, I did like a two week European tour thing. So we spent mm. like a couple I think like two or three days in Italy. Um, but it wasn't uh -huh. really enough time because it always felt like things were being rushed. Yeah, I think I think ours like a, ours is like a seven day tour. Mm -hmm. I think it's like we're going to Tuscany, we're going to Florence, we're going to a bunch of places. Yeah. I think there was like two tours. There was like the coastal tour and then there was like the city tour. I think we're doing the coastal tour okay. this time. And then maybe next time we go back, we'll do like a city tour. Because it's all through like the, the, it's like Disney does like a bunch of tours. Like mm -hmm. the, the, and my aunt has like a Disney timeshare. So she gets like discounts on everything. Oh, nice, so, nice. So that's how we're able to even probably go was because we're at least we're getting a discount through the timeshare. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only reason I've been to Disney World so many times because Disney World is stupid expensive. <laughs> like I don't know why they, they charge so much money, but the fact that my aunt has timeshare actually makes it affordable. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason I've been there so many times. But is uh, so is it like, uh, so how is it related to Disney for the the tour? They just they just run the tours. It's like tours by Disney. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because you know Disney does, you know Disney does everything. They make the movies, they have the parks, and they, apparently they do tours. Mm -hmm. It's just like Disney tours, 
Whatever. I don't know if this means like I'm going to take a photo with Mickey Mouse or it's just ran by Disney, but I guess we're going to find out. Um. Uh-huh. Yeah, when uh, when I went to Italy, uh, we went to where the Colosseum was. And yeah, in Rome. Yeah, the biggest disappointment there was that we didn't actually get to go up and do a tour of the Colosseum. Like that you just looked off. at it from the outside. Yeah, we looked at it from far away, and then I also looked over in the like I don't know if it was the opposite direction, but also like nearby. I think it was like an Athenian temple, like a temple mm. of Athena, or like one of the a, a Greek god of some kind. I'm pretty sure it was Athena, and we couldn't see that either. And I was like, dude, why are we just here for your picture? Like, I want to like I want spend to walk a, up and see. Yeah, it. I want to yeah. spend a bit more time because well, it, like, uh, it sounds like your tour was pretty rushed. Then I see what you're saying. That you say you want to go back. Yeah, like we spent a few hours at the Vatican, um, which that was very cool too. Like I, that's another spot that I'd want to go back to, because um, mm-hmm. they had the Sistine Chapel. I heard I, I found out that like that the Sistine Chapel was actually damaged recently. I don't know if oh, it was really? last year or something like that. So they're like re- like they're fixing some stuff up there, but. Uh, that's another spot where I'd really want to go back to because on the way while you're traveling to go into the the Sistine Chapel, there's like layers and layers of tapestries there as well. And I felt like I didn't have enough time to look at all those tapestries, but like there, there was enough time in the actual room. Don't they allow you, don't they allow you not to take pictures in there? Uh, in the room with the Sistine Chapel, yes. You're not supposed to take pictures in there. Uh, I snuck in like one or two, but it was like they weren't great quality like they they weren't great pictures because you're trying to also like not yeah, yeah. have your phone views visible and stuff like that so yeah um but it was very very cool i i just felt like as, cool. as someone who has done art in the past and and likes doing art mm-hmm. um it would have been yeah, i don't think that's on this fun. tour i think that's part of like the city tour was like roman and all that oh, was the yeah. city tour we're doing like the other tour yeah so i can see that part of italy but yeah, so I, I haven't seen. I, I probably wouldn't have seen much on the coastal side of things. So I'm definitely going to be curious yeah. to see what. Um, uh, it's like we go to Tuscany saw. and then there's a day where like some city that's like right on the Mediterranean Sea. We can go swimming in the Mediterranean. Uh huh. That'll be fun. Stuff like that, and then you know, go up to up to like Florence and and stuff. I think. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, I I'm kind of jealous because i'm like i really want i really want to go back to italy <laughs> like that's that is the that is the country where i'm like if i'm gonna go back um to visit another country again like that's the country that i want to go back to mm-hmm. spend a few like a few yeah. weeks there um, yeah, i'm looking forward to it my first time out of the country in like nearly 20 years so yeah yeah that'll be um, fun i hope you have a lot of fun i hope so too um i hope it doesn't uh turn into some type of disaster where i come home and uh I come home in a casket. You know, I don't know how that would happen. <laughs> you never know. You gotta, you gotta plan for these kinds of things in your head. You okay. never know. <laughs> Every day could be a last hour and you don't know it. Right, right. Of course, of course. You gotta live, you gotta live like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Interesting. As uh, they say. Interesting thought process <laughs> there. <laughs> um, Some people might say I need therapy. I think I just am smart. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> that is funny um yeah i think for me i don't know i i think the biggest thing is i want to travel i think that's the biggest thing where i'm like I, in like yeah, five or ten years I, agree. I want to be able to look back and see that i had a lot of very cool experiences or very interesting experiences worthwhile ones where it's like not just mm-hmm. me going to work like watching shows or like yeah no just, i agree with that because I, I feel like at some point it's like you're wasting the time you're wasting your you life have. yeah you're, you're yeah wasting the, time, your life. the limited time limited time that you have yeah like and that's not to say that you shouldn't watch shows or play video games or do anything online and stuff like that no i think that that stuff can there's highlight definitely your life too. more to experience out there though yeah there, there's there's like so much out in the world where it's like um maybe in the times that you're not able to go do that sure um play video games hang out with friends do all those things but also try to create those experiences where you're doing the things out in the world where you're going to remember them for the rest of your life i guess yeah some like once in a lifetime experiences yeah And, and i think part of the appeal right now of being so surrounded by 
like hikes and nature and things like that. It's like, I really hope that I continue to try and take advantage of it as best as I can. Um, the mm-hmm. winter has been a bit difficult cause it's always raining and it's very hard to go outside. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's like raining. Well, and not like a, well not a, sad. now we're in spring. So hopefully the weather starts turning around. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I hope it, the rain gets less and less so that I can spend more time outside and just see the things that are out there to offer. Um, that's definitely something that I'm very excited about. I, I know that I want to go to Portland very soon just to see what it's all about. Haven't been there yet. I hear the food's great there. So that's something that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Maybe spending some more time in Seattle as well. Um, maybe going to some more concerts and things like that. Like that. that's just like, I, I want to spend the time that I have outside of work chasing like different experiences um, yeah, yeah, no, as best I can. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. I agree. Alrighty. I think with that, we could probably end off for today. Um, we're hitting about an hour and 20 minutes so far. It's a bit of a shorter episode, but, um, I but think we talked about, about it, so. yeah. And, and I think we talked about some cool stuff here. So if you guys enjoyed, yeah, that's fine. I'm to wrap it up there. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed, please let us know in the comments below. Um, let us know if you got anything you'd, uh, you'd want to say or comment on, on what we talked about here today as well. And, uh, we'll catch you next time. Smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, smash that Spotify, <laughs> add to like songs button. I don't know what to, well, but smash it. Alrighty. Bye guys.